So you write a lot about AI and machine learning as well. Is there a technology there that this will enable or that's pretty speculative at this point? And then it does it work in the reverse too, because I saw like part of enabling this kind of network might be utilizing it. AI technology as well, right? To understand the signals and convert them. Yeah, there, there is a two-way street there. Uh, so uh, broadly speaking, we can talk about AI for networks and networks for AI, right? So these are okay. two different. I'll start with the second because you asked about it first. So networks for AI, uh, the point being that, you know, AI eventually, uh, of course there's hype and there's real things, but eventually there'll be applications which are using uh, artificial intelligence. I mean. Uh, think of a team of drones, right, trying to communicate back and forth, things of that sort. And uh, and those applications will involve usually more than one device, uh, and they may need to speak to each other, right? And that's where wireless comes in, right? So it's a it's a use case for for communication networks. It's a new use case. It's a bit different because it, for example, it's instead of of emphasizing high rates, some of those AI applications want you to be extremely reliable. Right, because they mm -hmm. don't send a lot of data. Maybe they send a little bit of their, you know, AI model and and send it to someone else. They don't may not send a lot of data, and that's something we've seen in the Internet of Things uh, with 5G. But with mm -hmm. AI applications, they may be different. So it's it's a very interesting use case where you somewhat uh, we were among the first to actually think a bit about that, and we talked about something called joint learning and communication, where I want my AI to be as accurate as possible and my communication to be as accurate as possible because they're inter interrelated. Because if I send you some of uh, part of my neural network and you receive it in error, that doesn't only mean that the communication was bad. It means that whatever prediction you're gonna do may be bad as well because you re receive something in error. That's not the fault of machine learning in that case. It's the fault of the communication network that was not uh, sufficiently reliable. So there are uh, anything that requires interconnectivity of multiple AI powered systems that needs communication eventually. So you, you need to, uh, to look at it, even this idea of like VR and so on, because a lot of these things, when you're in a virtual environment, a lot of the, like your avatar, for example, that's an AI model. This avatar should be you, right? You should be synchronized. And to be synchronized, mm -hmm. it means that the delay or the latency should be near zero. And that's a challenge for communication networks, right? And, and latency, we spoke a lot about rate, but latency is the big driver for like recent wireless uh, technologies. Now, the flip side of the coin, so AI for wireless is a very interesting area. When I did my PhD, when I used to go to, to, uh, to talks and say, oh, we can use some sort of machine learning or artificial intelligence, not specifically uh, ML, people would laugh at me, say, oh, this will never work, haha, -ha, communication doesn't need it. Uh, but we came to realize that, no, we, we need it. I mean, now 6G networks, they call them AI native, which means theoretically, at least, many of the processes we used to do through like, let's say, optimization algorithms or like heuristic algorithms may be done with AI and it may be more effective. Uh, now, what can it help us? So we talked about this unstable environment. That's an area where it can help us because if I can predict well how the obstacles will come and go, so to speak, then I can potentially prepare the network to, you know, there will be a blockage there, maybe do something with it. So I can do these simple things at the very least. Uh, currently, when we talk about, when people talk about AI native, at least if we want to be on the humble side, even these things like how do we transform information into the symbols we send over the channel, now it's done using algorithms that date maybe 50 years ago, and, and they work really well. I mean, there's nothing to complain there, but some, I mean, Nokia, for example, has have done some work where they showed, well, with some machine learning, we can come up with even better ones, right? And, and that's good. Embedding ML uh, helps you really do better and think about it like communication technologies like antennas and uh, all the things we talked about uh, we're gonna still push them forward but eventually there's a cap because there's a physical limit right there's a physics will stop you now you cannot overcome physics in any way but with machine learning or ai you may be able to use to be more intelligent in a way that you will reduce how close you are to the to the physical limits and kind of do uh, more with less in some sense Right. So I can kind of do more with, with less. And then these constraints, while they're still there, they're hard constraints, no one can uh, break them. We cannot break the laws of physics. But with intelligent uh, way of like, you know, managing resources and so on, I can actually give you better connectivity and still abide by those laws of physics, somewhat uh, 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 circumventing them, those in, in some sense. So I think these are the two, you know, AI for networks, networks for AI. Yeah, lots of data.
used in both yeah. cases. Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering for, especially for something like self-driving cars and whatever else you can imagine, like the avatars that you were talking about, that's going to require a lot of computing as well. Do you envision those being done on the device, whatever app you're running, or is that going to be like a network computer where you're just going to be running the app, sending the information, and then it's going to be computed in somewhere else at Apple or you know some other station? I think it has to be a combination of both because the eternal trade-off has been if, if you compute locally, uh, you're faster, but you have limited computing power. If you compute at a cloud or you know a far away location, you can use the, the as much computing power as you want, but you have latency. And you know if it's a self-driving car, you know you need to be able to tell it to stop as fast as you can. So you cannot keep going back and forth. I think a combination of the two. Uh, but this is where AI also comes into into the picture in the sense like if you have a, a central location where you can do these all very strong intelligent predictions, and then uh, think of that as a as a teacher, and then teach those small students on what they should do in certain uh, use cases and uh, the, the edge devices, basically the, the the other devices, the glass and the smartphone. And then if they need you, they would ask you again, right? So kind of reduce the back and forth. Uh, so going from sending everything to you know question and answers in, in some sense. Okay. And, and that that could be that could be pretty interesting. But just a small tangent there, or not specifically a tangent, but uh, uh, when we talked about 6G, and I think we, we were one of the first to talk about 6G, we were very specific to call it a wireless system, not a wireless communication system, because we think it can give at least four services now, not just communication. It can give you computing, because you have all these towers and so on out there. Why not use them to compute? It can give you uh, uh, energy. There are some research on you know, this uh, radio uh, frequency Charging small things, right? I mean, I'm not gonna charge your, you know, uh, your Tesla battery. Maybe, maybe that's too mm -hmm. much. But, uh, uh, but the the fourth one being what we call sensing, or another uh, uh, term for the same thing is called imaging. Meaning, like you can, through the communication signal, not only communicate but also basically image the environment. Know that you know your head is turning this way, uh, and this sensing helps actually overcome the stability issues as well because now. Even if the link is blocked for communication, I may be able to recover, you know, there's an obstacle there. That's an exciting area. And that becomes more possible with high frequencies because we, we talked about that before. The higher you are in the frequency, the more you can actually do a more accurate sensing. Uh, and, and that's useful. 